Hi everyone and welcome to the 19th edition of the group exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cell here at the Hanover Messe 2013. For those that are not familiar with the public forum, I invite you to come and have a seat. Drinks on the house or waitress will come around and serve water, coffee um, or soft drinks. So please join us for a marvelous discussion. We'll be discussing with AVL Fuel Cell Pro about AVL Fuel Cell products and engineering services. Please help me welcome AVL List Manager of Fuel Cell, Mr. Jürgen Reckberger. Thank you for joining us. Hey, thank you. Thanks. I think one thing that is important to mention, uh, compared to most of other companies here present at the fair, AVL ha ha List has kind of a different model than other companies. You're not a manufacturer, you're not a research center, so what are you? Um, AVL is a privately owned industrial company and our main focus is engineering for the automotive industry. So um, we are worldwide uh, the biggest independent engineering supplier for the automotive industry. Uh, we are present in 45 uh, different affiliates in all around the world. We make about 1 billion uh, euro turnover uh, based on engineering. And we, uh, our classical business case is that we develop a complete powertrain from the tank to the wheel for our customers. And the most of our customers are the international car OEMs. But we don't supply only powertrains for cars. We are also working on off-road vehicles, on two-wheelers, and also, for example, for stationary CHP plants. That's also a synergy we use in the fuel cell business because of the CHP application. So your involvement is usually in the automobile powertrain industry. What is your connection with fuel cell and hydrogen? Um, we have started fuel cell development in 2002 at AVL. Obviously, uh, as, an, as a big supplier for the automotive industry, uh, we have to deal with fuel cell powertrains because we are fully convinced that fuel cell powertrains will make it to the road. So we have to be prepared for this on the engineering side as well as on the test equipment side. And uh, that's why we have started this up. Actually, one of our first development programs was an APU, so not directly for the power propulsion systems, for auxiliary power. So before we get back to your APU system, um, you just mentioned that you truly see hydrogen and fuel cell being part of the mobility sector, but which involvement will it have in the industry? What will be its place in mobility? Um, I think it depends a little bit on applications, but I think there's uh, fuel cell powertrains. Really, it's our view, uh, make a lot of sense for passenger cars. Um, our general thinking or understanding is that we will see a diversified future. So we will see diversified fuels, we will see diversified powertrains. So for a long time to come, we will see internal combustion engines, we will see hybrid vehicles, we will see battery electric vehicles, and we also think we are totally convinced that we will see fuel cell vehicles because they have tremendous benefits for specific applications, especially for the passenger car uh, on long range vehicle, on the classical vehicle. So if you think about realizing a vehicle with the performance we know today, we cannot realize that with a battery electric drive. So we need the fuel cell. Only with the fuel cell we can realize a vehicle which we know today with range, with a driving fun, and uh, with uh, efficiency and zero emission. So you don't really see battery operated vehicle and fuel cell vehicle competitors. They kind of complement each other. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. I, will, I would fully support this. Uh, I don't see a big competition between battery electric vehicles and fuel cell vehicles. They are both uh, zero emission technology for e-mobility, but we definitely see the batteries in interurban and in city driving and the, the fuel cell for a long-range vehicle as we know the vehicles uh, from today. By the way, this is a public forum, so you're always invited to ask questions. If you have any questions, please raise your hand and I'll come down with a microphone. Um, one thing I wanted to cover, you have three product on display at your booth. Your booth yeah. is actually located at D55, which is in that direction. Um, could you tell us about the AVL SOFC APU? First of all, what does APU stand for and what is this product? Uh, so the APU, APU stands for Auxiliary Power Unit and it's a, a portable power generator which converts a conventional diesel fuel into 3 to 4 kilowatt of electric power. And uh, with, with that system we have about 50% lower fuel consumption 
we don't have any emissions like nitrogen oxides, carbon monoxide or hydrocarbons. And uh, the third advantage is that it is extremely silent. So it's around 45 dB, so basically you can't hear it. So it's extremely silent. So it's an auxiliary power unit, you say it's really efficient, it's low emission, low noise, but what's the market for such a unit? Um, we see the market mainly in, uh, in heavy duty trucks on the US market. Uh, because there's a very special situation, which is not totally true in Europe, but in, in the United States, trucks are typically idled during the night. That means that the main combustion engine, which is a 300 to 500 kilowatt engine, is operated in idling mode during the night, that the truck driver has still some energy for the comfort functions, like uh, climatization, like refrigerator, television, computer, and all that stuff. And uh, this, this is done at the moment with the main engine at a 3% efficiency. So it's very inefficient. And with our system, we can up to 30 to 35% efficiency. And that means we can dramatically reduce the fuel consumption of such a truck during idling mode, which means also a reduction in CO2 emissions by 90%. If for some of the yachting, I think they may be asking why would in the United States uh, trucks idle for eight hours overnight. I think it's important to mention that the train system um, in North America is not as good as in Europe and therefore long range delivery are done by commercial trucks and they often stay overnight because it's more than 12 hour drive and will idle overnight to keep, like you said, those uh, trucks running for TV, AC, um, and other needs that they need at night, which is very really inefficient. So one of the questions co that comes to my mind is, you're not a manufacturer, so how do we get a hold of this unit? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so to understand the, uh, the AVL business model, we are not manufacturing. We are a purely engineering company. So typically we support our customers from the scratch till start of production of a product. Uh, so we, we don't do uh, manufacturing of end customer products. And for this APU specific product, we offer this product based on license agreements for manufacturing partner. There is already one license agreement in place. So we have already licensed this technology to the Netherlands company HiRef Power. And HiRef Power will start uh, manufacturing this product as serious products in 2016 for the defense and maritime industry. So is this is an exclusive license or if we have other people that are interested in this APU unit, could they be part licensing as well? Yes, of course, it's possible. Uh, the license we have at the moment is non-exclusive and it's also limited to Europe. So we are quite flexible in, uh, in uh, business negotiations. So could I say you're actually looking for a partner for the uh, idling of truck? Yeah, of course. There, there are some discussions ongoing. We have three major truck tier one suppliers interested in this technology. And uh, we will try to also get a, a license agreement for the truck application in place. And we hope that we also can bring this product to the truck market in 2016-17. Okay, and then one other product you have on display is your THDA unit. Can you tell us what THDA stands for and what's the unit all about? Yeah, so the THDA stands for Total Harmonic Distortion Analysis. And this is a low cost stack monitoring device, uh, which we intend to bring into fuel cell vehicles to monitor the status of the PAM fuel cell stack. And it's actually a, complete, a really aggressive low cost approach. So what we do is we just measure one voltage, the complete stack voltage, and based on some signals we uh, implement, we can detect more or less all critical failure modes of PAM fuel cells. For example, what we ha already have demonstrated in automotive fuel cell stacks is we can detect uh, fuel starvations on anode and cathode side, we can detect membrane drying, and uh, we can detect uh, also some water droplet issues in the stack. And there's two types of, of this unit in two yep. different models, one for lab and one for the end user. Yep. Um, can you expand on this subject a little yep. bit? Uh, that's true, we have this product on two, two platforms. One platform is a laboratory device, so you just bring into a laboratory, connect it to the stack, and you turn it on. And the other thing is that we want to bring this into fuel cell vehicles. And the big advantage of this is that it doesn't add any hardware to the fuel cell vehicle. 
So the hardware cost of it is zero. It's just an algorithm you place into the vehicle control unit because the, the signals we need can be created by the power electronics in the vehicle. And you have already have shared that al algorithm with some car manufacturer, yes. I believe. Uh, we have already uh, brought that into the fuel cell vehicle development programs of six major car o OEMs. And with one Japanese company, we are very much focusing on bringing this into the fuel cell vehicles. And any other manufacturer that may be interested in that al algorithm can come and see yeah, you at your booth for sure at D55 again, which is in that direction. Questions are always welcome from the public, so please raise your hand if you have more. Um, one thing you mentioned about that THDA module is it's for PEM fuel cell. Yeah. Um, do you have any unit for the SOFCs? Uh, yes, it's under development at the moment. Uh, so we got some inquiries from the industry that this is also a, a very interesting uh, platform for SOFC. And we have started an internal R&D project. And we think we can make this available for SOFC within 2014. So it's, it's coming. Not yeah. there, but coming. <laughs> uh, come back next year. Maybe we'll have the result by then. And uh, you also have on display your EVL Fire CFD code. Can you tell us what that is? Yeah, the, the Fire CFD code is also a, an engineering uh, tool for actually PEM fuel cells and the automotive industry. Uh, it is based on the AVL Fire product, which is a fully commercial product. It's a, a multi-physics uh, CFD simulation code, which has been developed actually already some 20 years ago for the simulation of engines, of uh, exhaust gas after treatment devices and things like that. And within the last two, three years, we have made this compatible with the simulation of PAN fuel cells. And the special feature of it is that we can simulate the two phase flow. So typically in PAN fuel cells, you have a lot of problems with liquid water. Uh, the water occurs somewhere in the flow field in the gas diffusion layer and it makes a lot of problems. So, but with our code, you can simulate where, where you, this liquid water will form. So you can see water films, you can see how these water droplets go through the gas diffusion layer and through the gas channels. And that's very important to optimize your stack design towards the water management of the stack. So you offer this code, this algorithm, as part of a software license that can be purchased. Yeah. But what if I'm a stack manufacturer that don't have the facility or the time or the experience to do this type of testing? Um, I believe you can do all these services for them. Yes, of course. So we have at AVL internal a skill team for the CFD simulation. And we also can use this platform in a consulting project where the simulation is uh, performed within AVL. So we've covered the three uh, products you have on display, which is the SOFC APU unit. You also have the THDA um, module, and then the AVL Fire CFD code, which I invite you to go see to their both at D55. But AVL is more than that. You offer a lot of other engineering services. Um, can you give us some ideas on? Yeah. So basically, what AVL, what, what our strategy is, uh, for the conventional vehicle, for hybrid vehicle, for battery vehicle, we are already today a very comprehensive engineering partner for the automotive industry. And we want to be that also in the future for fuel cell vehicles and in general for fuel cell products for a lot of different applications. So we, we offer uh, engineering on, on very different scopes. We do very small projects, for example, on uh, only small technical consulting or business consulting to very big projects, multi-million dollar projects, where we develop complete fuel cell systems for the customer from the scratch to start of production. And uh, within that, we can support on various topics. For example, we do a lot of consulting on systematic durability and reliability development. We can do uh, customer specific media supply, for example, compressors and air blowers for the fuel cell industry. We are also very heavily working on a CHP product. So we have at AVL a 10 kilowatt CHP, SOFC CHP system prototype which is running at the moment, which efficiency is between 50 to 60 percent. So there's a, there are a lot of things where AVL can support fuel cell development programs. You have consulting services as well. Yes. We have an own uh, company for this in Germany that's called St uh, Strategy Engineers. And these guys are only doing business consulting. 
Well, unfortunately, we're running out of time, so we'll have to finish this interview at this point. But please help me thank uh, Mr. Jörg Reckenberger for his time. It was a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.